problem asks how much work would it take to push two electrons very slowly from a separation of 2 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, which is your typical atomic distance, to 3 times 10 to the negative 15 meters, a typical nuclear distance. So from these points, uh, you are actually given two points. The first point is at 2 times 10 to the negative 10, and the second point is at 3 times 10 to the negative 15. And you have to find for the work that it would take for the electric field to do this um, separation. Second is if the protons are both released from rest at the closer distance in part A, it means uh, from this distance, 3 times 10 to the negative 15, how fast are they moving when they reach their original separations? To visualize this problem, um, it should look like this. You have two points, the red dots over there, and initially it's at 2 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, and we will label those points as point A. And our distance is also as R sub A. Now, um, we will force the protons to move closer at the distance of R sub B 3 times 10 to the negative 15, and we will label that as our point B. Now, uh, you recall from the work, uh, from the problem that we are asked for the work done in moving our protons from point A to point B. So, remember from class that the work done in this case is simply the negative change in its potential energy. And this is basically one of the form of your work energy theorem. So, work from A to B is just the negative change of the potential. Now, rewriting that one, we get work from A to B is just the potential at A, so this potential energy at this point, and the potential energy at point B. Now, I would just like to clarify that we're talking about potential energy and not poten electric potential. So that means to say that in solving for this problem, we need to solve for U sub A and U sub B. Now, we will solve for the potential energy at A or U sub A, um, recall this equation, which is similar to your electric field equation. The only difference is R is uh, a linear term, not a quadratic term. So R to the 1 instead of R squared. Otherwise, if this is R squared, then you are dealing with the electric potential energy. I mean, electric field, sorry. So for this problem, our Q1 and Q2, if you can, if you can notice, is simply 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs because of the fact that these are protons and protons carry the base unit of charge which is the E with this value and since protons so they are both positive so you will get the potential energy at that point to be 1.1549 times 10 to the negative 18 joules now if you might ask uh, you get the, the same or the correct unit because C times C over here will cancel out with the C squared. And M squared over M will just be M. So Newton times meter is joules. And that is right because we're solving for the potential energy and it's in, always in terms of joules. Now we are done with potential at A. So what we need to do now is to simply solve for the electric potential at point B. So we will be utilizing the, the same equation. And if you will notice... We're basically doing the same process, except uh, the RB now is this 3 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. And when you do your calculation, you will get that the electric potential energy at B is 7.6992 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. So basically, uh, we have now solved for the potential energies at points A and point B. Now, if you recall previously, that is just... Uh, the network done in this process in moving from A to B is simply the change in the potential energies. And we know UA and UB, so we will simply substitute the values and we will get a result that the work done in this case is negative 7.6991 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. And uh, let's think if the sign is making sense here. Okay, now take note that these are protons their normal tendency is to move away from each other. Now, what you are doing or what we did here is to let them move closer and that is against their natural tendency. 
therefore to accomplish this um this scenario or this specific um positions in our system the electric field is doing i mean the external force must do a negative work to accomplish this one because otherwise um they will simply move away dapat gusto nila magpalayo sa sugusa but then again um we force them to move closer so the work done is actually negative because if you think about it the force that should be applied for this particle or for this proton at point a is towards this direction I mean, sorry, it's towards the this direction. The electric force due to these two charges is towards this direction, as you can see in my cursor, and towards this direction. But then you notice that the displacement is actually on the opposite direction. Now, if you take the cosine of that, because work is Fd cosine theta, you notice that it will bear a negative sign. And hence, uh, this is correct, that you should be getting a negative sign, all right? Or you, you can simply think about it that, since uh, the normal tendencies of the proton should repel each other, they should be moving apart. And what you're doing is you force them against their normal tendency, so you should be doing a negative work in that case. Now for the second problem, if the protons are released from rest at the closer distance in part A, that means this 3 times 10 to the negative 15, how fast are they moving? when they will be reaching their original position. So that's your point A in that case. So to solve for the velocity of the protons, you can use the work energy theorem or the conservation of energy. In this case, I will be um, utilizing the conservation of energy. But so you can um, use the alternative form of solution for this one. You use the work energy theorem, which is this one. The network will just be the negative change in the potential energy or the network will just be the change in its kinetic energy. So obviously, um, from here, you can also derive the conservation of energy. So we will be dealing with uh, the conservation of energy. And if you can recall, your conservation of energy just simply states that the sum of the kinetic energies and potential energy, let's say initially, should be equal to the sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy final or maybe after whatever happened in the system so in this case i notice that the k sub i the kinetic energy initially is zero because of the fact that it is mentioned in the problem that it's released from rest so that means the protons have no initial velocity at point b so this will just be zero all right so rewriting this equation you have u sub i minus u sub f is equal to the kinetic energy final. Now we solve for this earlier, the u sub i and u sub f respectively. And k sub f, another thing that you should note about k sub f in this case is that this should be comprised of the kinetic energy of the first proton, let's say the right proton. And kp sub 2 is the kinetic energy of the second proton, which is on your left side of this, uh, of this figure. So that's one thing that you should note because you have two moving bodies in this case, or two protons. Now, if you recall from our previous uh, discussion, notice that my u sub i, or initial, is the potential at b over here at this point. And my u sub f will be at point a, potential energy at a, because of the fact that I'm moving from b to a, right? So I'm hoping um, you don't get confused at this part. Now, what you're seeing here is I'm simply expressing my kinetic energy into one half, mp vp1 squared this is for the first proton and one half mp vp2 squared for the second proton so we can just simply factor out in this case in the right hand side of the equation one half mp so we get vp1 for the first proton squared plus uh, sorry this should be vp2 for the second proton squared so now uh, you can just simply add this up so you have two vp1 squared and then uh, I'm going to solve for VP1 because basically whatever the velocity of proton 1, that should be the velocity of v a proton 2. So I simply called VP1 and VP2 as VP1 in, that, in this case. So I get, um, you multiply, notice that 2 and 2 VP1 and 1 half, that will just be canceling out each other. So I get MP and this one, VP1 squared. I'm going to divide both sides by mp, so what is left in my right-hand side of the equation is vp1 squared. 
So to get rid of the square term, uh, I will simply take the square root. In this case, that take the positive root of uv minus ua over mp. And I know uv from before. I know ue. I know the mass of the proton. So this is simply a matter of substitution. And when you substitute the values of this, you get that the vp1, the velocity of proton 1, which is vp2 also because they are moving at the same velocity, um, is just 7.7899 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So this is how you will solve this problem. However, if you go back, you can also solve uh, part B if you're going to use these two sets of equations, particularly the equation 2 for the work energy theorem.